All right, I'm here with the uh, other two Tollersons, and uh, this is day three on the bikes. Today we leave. In this video, we ride to a place nicknamed the town too tough to die. It's one of the most infamous towns in American history. Founded in 1879, it quickly became a boom town with settlers and prospectors hoping to strike it rich in the silver mines. But boom towns also drew renegades and gunslingers. While the violence here became so prevalent, the undertakers had to work seven days a week and because so many of its citizens died suddenly with their boots on, they named the cemetery the Boot Hill Graveyard. This place also produced one of the most famous shootouts in Western history, the shootout at the OK Corral, which made legends out of some of its participants. Stay tuned, and I'll show you some of this old town, as well as how we got here. Join us as we ride to Tombstone. This morning we're heading to Tombstone, Arizona. Uh, we're west of Atlanta right now, and today we're going to plan to make uh, Longview, Texas, which is about 630 miles away. So we got about a 10 to 12 hour day ahead of us. So we're about to get cranked up and get rolling. The sun is not up yet. It's about 6, 6.15 in the morning here. The guys are ready. We're excited. Come join us for the ride. Hey, I want to thank you again for joining us today. This is a four-day ride, so I'm going to share some of the ride, but I also want to share some of the old town of Tombstone. So to keep the video at a reasonable length, I'm going to share a little bit of both. Some of the ride, some of the town, and it should be a lot of fun. Right now, we're about to hop on I-20, and we're going to take it easy until the sun comes up. As sunrise replaces the night sky, we roll into Alabama. Hey, and by the way, I have to tell y'all that this is a very special ride for all of us. In fact, let me explain. You see, two of the riders are my brothers. That's my brother Bobby on his 2015 electric glide. And that's my brother David on his 2015 road glide. And hey, we didn't always ride big Harley Davidson motorcycles. Oh no, we started out on something far more hazardous tricycles and bicycles with training wheels. And let me tell you, we were known to crash and burn a few times. We graduated to riding lawnmowers. Next came the mini bike, but we only had one, so we had to share, but we didn't mind. That was followed up with the Honda Trail 70. Again, we had to share. And that's Sonny, one of my other brothers, who was brave enough to let us take him for a ride. As far as other members of the crew, well, we've been riding together for over 30 years. That's me. That's my brother David. That's Piper. And that is Shadow Man. And this scene was repeated hundreds of times over the years in our professional life and has continued ever since. 
And as far as my dear friend Wood, well, we've ridden with him from the Smoky Mountains to the Rocky Mountains. And because you never know if the last time will be your last time, we all cherish this ride and our time together. Okay, we're 150 miles in, so we're gonna make our first fuel stop and grab a cup of coffee. I tell you, I, I'm colder now than I was when I was riding. <laughs> I know, standing here letting the wind hit us. And let me tell you, these guys didn't waste any time. A couple of them didn't even take their helmet off. And after a quick cup of coffee, they were loaded and ready. And took off like riders on the Pony Express. Excited, motivated to see Tombstone. You tell him I'm coming and hell's coming with me, you hear? Our destination being a cross-country ride, we took advantage of the clear open highway. Two hours later, we entered Louisiana as we crossed the mighty Mississippi River. Okay, we're 430 miles into the trip uh, on the way to Tombstone. We're somewhere in Louisiana. I have no idea where at this point, but in Louisiana, and uh, we've got what 200 more miles to 200 go more miles to go till we get to Longview, texas 200 more miles to go and we're hungry so we're gonna grab something to eat after some nourishment we rolled out to finish the last 200 miles for the day we made it through shreveport without any delays and shortly after our first stop. Today we covered 632. 632? Yeah. Phil Piper, how so you feeling, man? I feel man? good. I think we could get 50 more about this crew. I'm very proud of, of my my uh, my brothers. I'm surprised I got everybody out here. They got 600 miles out of them. Jose, how you feel about the ride, buddy? Or is this going to be on the internet? Yes. My butt sure is sore. I'm yeah. glad we're here. Well, I see that you got a cart too for all of your luggage and what have you. Yeah. When you travel like <laughs> I do, when you travel like I do, you need a lot of clothes. I've been gone you know, for a couple of weeks. Right, man. Oh, the ride was outstanding. Well, it was great. We just had a nice, safe ride. Now we yeah. landed at a nice 
Supposedly nice hotel. We're gonna figure that out later on. Yeah, right? Shadow Man. <laughs> Shadow Man got the rooms for us, so I don't know. I, hey, all I know is when we got off the exit, we've already seen two police officers running around. Well, as you heard from the guys, we had a great ride today. Uh, and as Wood said, man, I mean, we had great weather, great traffic, no problems whatsoever there. Well, I want y'all to know that looks real pretty right there. Good <laughs> Lord. Look, I'm coming in with a, with a Walmart bag and a toothbrush. Actually, I got a few more than that, but that's, that's about all. Time for a shower and some rest, and we'll see you in the morning. All right, I just got word that one of our crews got to turn around and go back home. Let's find out what's going on. And Piper, as you know, rode with us yesterday a total of 700 miles, and he has to go back to Atlanta, Georgia. We're in Longview, Texas now. He's got to go back to Atlanta, Georgia today. Uh, tell us why. Well, I got word, a confirmation that my son, uh, Trevor, is graduating Airborne Ranger, or Airborne School, rather, on Friday. Uh, at first, initially, they were going to be the following week so everything was going to be good and that's why i pushed out um he's going to be the second one out the door and i couldn't be happier for him so there's gotta yeah. gotta head back for that listen if you have to cancel a trip especially a trip like this i can't think of a better reason to do it we're so grateful that piper is going back for a good reason and not something sad or tragic if you got to bail it's a great reason to bail congratulations yes. to you man yep. all right Pipe. Next stop for the day would be in Odessa, Texas. That's about 500 miles away, so it'll be a little shorter ride and should take only about 10 hours. One rider short and with mixed emotions, the crew pushed on toward Tombstone. This morning, we kept our speeds more moderate, hoping to miss the rush hour of Dallas and Fort Worth, which are only about 90 minutes away. And as our good fate would have it, we rode through those heavily traveled areas without any issues. And as we put Fort Worth in our rear view. It's time to settle in for the long ride across Texas as we listen to the harmonic sounds of the V twins. All while enjoying the open, uncluttered highway. Just you and your thoughts and your stories. One of my favorite quotes comes from the 14th century explorer and traveler, Ibn Battuta. He said, traveling leaves you speechless and then turns you into a great storyteller. I wondered what stories this trip would bring to life and be told years to come. I then reflected on some of the stories created from my travels. My hope is your travels are creating great stories for you that you'll be able to tell for years to come. All right, it's been a good hard day of riding so far. We've got about 100 miles to go. 
uh, we're still in Texas. You know, Texas is the only place you can hop, hop on the road in the morning, drive all day, and when you get to your destination at the end of the day, you're still in Texas, right? It's starting to get in the desert part. Yeah, we, we're what, what, 100 miles from Odessa. So I'm gonna talk to these guys tonight too. We're gonna talk about, what you know, what do you think about while you ride a bike and you're on the road for 12 hours a day? What do we think about? What do you think about, you know, when you're out there on the road? So we're It's a small place, but that's all right. It's all we need. Shadow Man, tell us, what are you thinking about on some of these long days we've had on the bike? I'm thinking about how fortunate I am that I can make these rides. You got to ride while you can ride. You know, things happen. You know, and you want to do these things while you still can. And I'm thinking about our destination once we get to where we're going. Wood, what are you thinking about, man? Talk to us. Well, for me, 90% of the time when I'm riding, that's the piece of relaxation. So I'm thinking about the stuff that you can't think about at home because someone tugging on your left and right all day long. On this ride, nobody but just me and the bike and whatever thoughts would come to my mind. Jose, what's your motivation for taking this long ride across the country? I see the daggone town of Tombstone. I watched that movie for 30 years. I uh, fixed to retire in a couple months. And I had the opportunity, so I said, I'm going to go to Tombstone, Arizona. Yeah, sure would. Flyboy, why are you doing this? Well, you know, it's uh, for me, it's always been, uh, it's always been a quest. Um, can I make it? Can my bike make it? Can my body make it? Uh, will the weather hold out? To me, it's always a, a, a challenge to, to make these kind of long rides. Okay, while the other guy's out socializing, I just want to show you what I'm in here doing. I'm downloading some footage uh, from today's ride, and I'm also making sure I got plenty of batteries, the cameras are all checked, and we're good to go, ready for day three. You will never, never in life meet a hater doing better than you. As we put Odessa behind us, our next stop is La Cruces, New Mexico. It's about 400 miles away, but tomorrow is D-Day. We roll in the tombstone. As we entered El Paso, traffic slowed, but we never had to put a foot down, so no complaints. And 45 miles later, we entered the land of enchantment and our stop for the night. Well, good morning, everybody. Just checking in. This is day four of our trip to Tombstone. Uh, we are leaving Las Cruces, New Mexico today, about a 250 mile ride into Tombstone. So I can't wait to get there. I want to show all these guys this great old town. Oh, they're not scared of you. They scared of what you represent to them. What you represent to them is freedom. What's wrong with freedom, man? That's what it's all about. Oh, yeah, that's right. That's what it's all about, all right. But talking about it and being it, that's two different things. 
Oh, yeah, they're going to talk to you and talk to you about individual freedom. But they see a free individual, it's going to scare them. One of the reasons that we plan to pass through New Mexico early is due to some of the extreme weather they get out here. Dust storm warning signs are common and they provide some general guidelines should you encounter one, which is always a possibility, I guess, really uh, from West Texas all the way through Arizona. And some of the high winds they get out here, man, I'm telling you, it can have deadly consequences. In fact, to see more of what I mean, check out my friend Doodle on a motorcycle's video when she was in New Mexico. She was in a race with a dust storm and in fact had to delay her trip due to some of the high winds. Fortunately, our forecast is not calling for that, but we're rolling early just in case. Hey guys, we're coming up on a border checkpoint here. Oh, they're waving us through. They're waving us through. Go ahead. Arizona. As we crossed into Arizona, the guys were psyched. Man, we could almost see the old town of Tombstone. And because we were so deep into southern Arizona, we threw in a little surprise for the guys. This is Douglas, Arizona, and that is the border wall between the USA and Mexico. On the way to Tombstone, I wanted to bring the guys down here to the U.S.-Mexican border wall here. Take a look. After leaving Douglas, we took in some more beautiful riding in southern Arizona. And then our destination, Tombstone. first place I wanted to take the crew was? We just made it to Tombstone, Arizona, and I've just taken the crew to uh, the Crystal Palace. This is one of the original 
so-called original uh, saloons of Tombstone. Uh, of course, Tombstone burned a couple times, so nothing's really original here, but maybe the bird cage. Then we ran into a familiar face. This is Michelle. She was here on my first visit to Tombstone in 2019 and even provided some history of the place. This thing is an original building. Ceiling, floor, and walls are all original from the 1800s. The bar and the back bar are both replicas of the original, rebuilt from the original blueprints. Those two gambling wheels that are hanging on the wall over there, those are also original. They came from the Oriental, which is right on the corner. And hey, the Crystal Palace, well, it was a great place to quote some of your favorite lines from the movie. And I want them both right now. I don't want any more trouble. Well, you got trouble! I don't want any trouble with you, Ringo. There's no money in it. Well, you got trouble! You got trouble. Oh, if these walls could talk. Back outside, we saw another familiar face. This is Arizona Bill, a tour guide. I also and met him in 2019, in town, and at age 76, he's still it's providing right. walking tours. Nice oh, and never meets a stranger. As the stagecoach approaches, it's a good time to show you the famous Birdcage Theater. It had its grand opening in December of 1881. He gained a reputation as one of the wickedest theaters between New Orleans and San Francisco. The New York Times reported, the Birdcage Theater is the wildest, wickedest night spot between Basin Street and the Barbary Coast. During the Birdcage, uh, it's said that they've had 16 shootouts during, the, during that era. 26 people were killed, and there's 140 bullet holes in the ceiling to show uh, the, how much violence they had back in the day. It got his name from the 12 boxes above the main floor, where the ladies of the night worked their trade. For the eight years it was in business, the theater never closed its doors. And that's the Pharaoh table. It's said to be where Doc Holliday played. And here's a look from the back of the theater, facing the stage. Back in its heyday, it probably looked something like this. And backstage, well, that's the Black Mariah. It's a horse-drawn hearse. It carried all but six of the tombstone residents who perished here to the Boot Hill graveyard. It's one of only eight ever made and valued by the Ford Museum at over $2 million. And downstairs is said to have been the longest poker game in history, lasting over eight years and five months. Players would have to sign up and they'd wait for days before earning a seat at the table. Okay, we're back outside and that's the stagecoach right there. You can take a tour of the town in one of those if you'd like. This is where the undertaker's office was, and as you've already heard, they were quite busy back in the day. The Doc Holliday Saloon. There's the Oriental. They have singing and uh, dancing in there. You see there's, that's a haunted hotel. And once again, Tombstone mixes and blends, if you will, history with tourism, which I'm sure really helps keep this old town alive and supported. That's Big Nose Kate Saloon. It's on the National Historic Registry and was the original Grand Hotel where many famous people, including the Earps and Doc Holliday, stayed.
Okay, I think you get the idea of just how cool the old town looks. Uh, just makes you feel like you're out in a Western movie. Uh, but now I'm gonna take you to the place where the most famous shootout in Western history occurred. This is the OK Corral. Back in its small lot, the Earps and Doc Holliday confronted the Clintons and McLowrys, who belonged to the cowboy gang. Wild Earp's hand-drawn map of the events, as used in his court case, describes where the men stood. And after a 30-second shootout, two McClowry brothers and Billy Clanton lay dead. And speaking of those who died, they're buried here in the Boot Hill Graveyard. The historic graveyard is resting place for those killed in the OK Corral shootout. Do you know why it was called Boot Hill? Uh, because so many people that are buried here were killed with their boots on. Good gracious. That's how it got its name, Boot Hill Graveyard. But you didn't know that, did you? Did not. <laughs> Marshal Fred White, who was killed in front of the bird cages buried here, and so many others who died violently and suddenly. Hey, you'll enjoy your visit here. Grab a map and spend some time revisiting a bygone era of the Wild West. And after a couple of hours at the graveyard, we rode down the street to what is said to be Wyatt Earp's house. Standing beside the house is a statue of the man this old town made famous. Well, we're going to be in Tombstone a few more days, but hey, we'll let you hop off here. Thanks for watching, and until next time, be well and stay safe. <laughs>